link so it's on your screen the screen the link on screen it's on your screen the link no i could i could not get it i think it has to be enabled Mm, Mr. Sen, uh, I'm not finding. Yeah, now it is coming. Okay, right. Yeah. So I'm showing my screen. Uh, are you able to see my screen, please? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope I'm uh, clearly audible. And um, no. I. Your presentation is not talk. seen. You are seen. Pardon? Your presentation is not seen. You are seen. Check it out. My my screen is full screen at, at the moment. Oh, uh, it's not yeah, shared. It's Only you are yeah. seen. We are able to see it. Are you visible to me? Yeah. Okay. You are visible. Okay. Go ahead. Then you go ahead. Yeah. 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 Sense, sense, sense. Can you see that now? You go ahead. Let me check. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Now we see your screen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because now I think I was able to share Microsoft uh, uh, PowerPoint uh, window. So I I will talk about uh, ocean renewable energy and uh, the development that we have been doing in at NIT. The effort on ocean renewable energy started in IIT Madras in uh, uh, late eighties. Uh, it started with uh, setting up of an OTEX cell. Obviously, at that time I was in school. Uh, uh, but here, back here in IIT Madras, uh, they started working on OTEC and then they also were asked to work on wave energy. And that's how the work, uh, uh, and in the, for wave energy, essentially, they earmarked certain uh, uh, technologies which in, included. Uh, 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 Kind of the floating devices, and then it's uh, mechanical uh, uh, coupling to uh, energy device. Then they also work on o OWC, and then ultimately found that OWC was the way forward. They also worked uh, uh, started uh, uh, in the due time on uh, OTEC that was in late 90s. Uh, there was a very ambitious experiment, but essentially all this was done. Uh, for a uh, really, I'll say, very appropriate reason. Incidentally, we have a very long coastline. We also have a uh, uh, kind of you no know, a huge exclusive economic zone to the, uh, it's more than 2 million square kilometer. We all know that we are facing uh, energy uh, scarcity, not exactly uh, people in the metropolitans, but if we go to remote areas, uh the the availability of electricity hasn't been really ideal the the average per capita uh, energy consumption in india is very very less compared to the uh, average per capita energy consumption uh, in the developing developed countries so essentially we have areas where the energy is very scarce then we have coastal areas which are pretty remotely located. For example, Sundarmans, Andamans, Lakshadweep Islands. Now, islands have got their own specific issues because all the resources have to be sent from mainland to, uh, uh, let's say, Laksh Lakshadweep. So that includes food, that includes uh, diesel, and uh, that also includes uh, anything, any construction material. In, including the people also because to to uh, carry on the ad, administrative uh, work uh, people uh, along with natives uh, uh, people from mainland keep traveling so these islands also have a significant floating population now if we really look at the islands and the remote coastal areas we really need we really come to understand that uh, the whenever there is uh, the sea is rough the supply of diesel stops gets hindered and then there is issue uh, of energy now even if uh, we uh, 
consider that you know we have diesel uh, uh, genesis and we ensure a good supply of energy the cost of energy is plainly very high so so uh, uh, there is a real need that these islands need to become self reliant uh, they need to have a much larger diesel displacement from renewables and then there has there is an effort to work on the development of renewable energy uh, and then oceans come uh, resources that uh, ocean has to offer come really handy the question will be which resources have to be can be harnessed that depends upon the kind of uh, uh, resource that the location has got now when we plainly we can uh, say that you no know, living and non living resources large to large extent i think uh, uh, island uh, people in island as well as in coastal area and elsewhere also they they have fish as food uh, when it comes to non living resources oceans have a significant amount of uh, 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 polymetallic nodules uh, present at lo different location but they are discreetly present and spotting them and uh, getting them itself is a huge task in fact uh, ministry of earth sciences and within that and iot is working in these areas very actively anyway then but then the third part is the the water and in energy so so essentially energy is the resource that we we are going to talk about uh, we are focusing today i'm i'll focus my uh, presentation on essentially ocean renewable energy uh, that we can harness question next question will be where from where that really needs uh, a kind of in depth study to uh, from where uh, the these resources are available and there has to be a effort to ex uh, exploit those resources now again depending upon availability considering the econ uh, ecological balance of the place how much resource has to be uh, harvested has to be uh, taken the last question is when the question is actually the real answer when to start doing this is actually we should have done it yesterday so essentially we it's high time that we focus on oceans uh, as a, a significant resource for renewable energy now coming to ocean renewable energy we we have wave energy in form of uh, waves uh, so, so uh, and then it is abundant in nature then sea water moves from one place to another place forming current there are various reasons uh, there are various oceanographic reasons uh, for having uh, having the currents present in the water but apart from ocean currents there are tidal currents at various places uh, along the coast in gulfs for example if we we really see this area uh, gulf of kambas and gulf of kutch sundarbans then there are many places in andaman where the the andaman sea in this region uh, is connected to bay of bengal through the channels running across the uh, archipelago so this channel these channels have huge uh, water movement and uh, uh, this this this, mo this movement is called as tidal streams or tidal currents now then third part is ocean thermal energy as we go deeper in the sea the temperature drops and at a, uh, uh, at say something like say 1000 meters we can uh, have a temperature of something like say say 6 7 degrees celsius uh, and uh, surface temperature is around say uh, th uh, 28 29 30 degrees celsius so this gives a, a temperature difference across which a power thermodynamic power cycle can be operated and that's where the ocean thermal energy conversion uh, briefly we can call it as uh, ab abbreviated as otec uh, comes into picture and also using uh, uh, the same resource as the ocean thermal gradient uh, thermal desalination also is possible okay i'll i'll try to remain as uh, simple as possible uh, pardon me if uh, the uh, presentation sounds too technical but uh, essentially i want to show some photographs and uh, some information about some some studies i'll i'll try to be as uh, i'll try to explain in as simple terms as possible but thankfully 
the, the larger uh, audience of this webinar uh, uh, comprised of uh, engineers. So I think I won't have real trouble in com communicating my thought uh, uh, across to them. So, so in case of wave energy, the oscillating water column principle uh, is what actually we are focusing on. So when the wave comes, the, the column of water oscillates vertically. That pushes air out of the chamber and sucks the water, uh, sucks air inside the chamber when the water level drops. Now, this movement of air inward and out, outward has to be captured. Uh, it, it, uh, provides a kind of you no know, energy which uh, in uh, uh, which can be extracted using a turbine, specially designed turbine that is in turn coupled to a generator. So that is the basic uh, logic of a uh, uh, oscillating water column principle. So now there there are two ways. One is actually fixed one on the shore or say say on a, in, inside a caisson, and second one is a floating. A, a type of floating oscillating water column device is what actually I'm trying to show here. And uh, uh, one minute, uh, yeah. So so in this uh, this this boy essentially uh, is aligned in a such a way that it is uh, it's uh, it is a kind of L-shaped boy, and the water enters from here, and then this can have heave upward and downward motion. It can have surge, uh, a kind of motion in the direction of wave, and then it can have pitch. So uh, like this. So so uh, so all com combination of this motion essentially uh, uh, makes this what column oscillate vigorously inside and then the usual uh, uh, turbine generator which which is essentially uh, uh, common to a fixed water uh, oscillating water column device also uh, rotates and uh, uh, electricity is generated now in iit madras essentially go to the, work, mr. hello mr prasad please go to the full screen full screen yes and we are seeing the first first slide only here we are seeing actually some are you able to see my slide now ah now we are seeing fourth slide yeah 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 now somehow actually uh, it is alternating I'm are you able to see the full screen, screen? Ah, yeah. Ah, now it is full screen yeah, yeah. I, I think i'll not disturb uh, and click anyway so so uh, uh, it will save a lot of trouble for you and me so essentially this wave yeah, energy okay. plant uh, was established by iit madras after huge amount of uh, academic research conducted in iit madras uh, uh, department uh, ocean engineering department and uh, uh, this was uh, located in bilingam kerala uh, in kerala uh, in bilingam they uh, the when the uh, average wave energy potential was measured uh, it was found to be 15 kilowatt per meter now essentially in this plant uh, a constant uh, a waste turbine was uh, tested then it was replaced by a fixed guide when impulse turbine and then ultimately uh, the energy generated from this plant was fed to a, uh, a small ro plant and uh, uh, this was a seawater uh, uh, ro plant so so uh, and the water that was generated was fed to the uh, the nearby community now then uh, Essentially, this plant essentially uh, was decommissioned in uh, 2009 uh, after the demonstration of uh, uh, the plant. The, the technology was over, and uh, the focus was shifted to uh, smaller devices, uh, mainly floating devices. And uh, we developed a, a, a device called as backward bend ducted by uh, the schematic of which actually I had shown uh, recently. Uh, there was a Initial, as a first iteration, we had a turbine and uh, 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 that was um, uh, fitted on the boy. Uh, we tested that, uh, the whole contraption in uh, of Chennai and we found that the energy production was not uh, optimal. Then we went with uh, uh, trials or studies where matching of turbine characteristics and the OWC, oscillating water column, uh, was required. So we underwent those studies and then found that one particular size was going to be the optimal uh, for the boy. And then we 
uh, fabricated that turbine tested in a uh, in a laboratory carried out uh, a significant amount of uh, computational fluid dynamic studies and then fitted the uh, this um, turbine on the boy and this this new uh, reconfigured boy was tested and uh, we found that uh, we were able to generate 100 watt uh, peak power this was a, a, a demonstration boy and uh, the purpose was to uh, light very small loads like say, say a beacon lamp but then this thought was uh, matured into a more appropriate uh, say, shape and size where uh, we uh, we started working on a uh, navigational boy uh, which is which was wave powered essentially all the ports need navigational lamps and uh, nav na navigational boys to mark the navigational channel so now uh, the the existing lamps essentially use um, uh, the boys essentially use the beacon lamps which are powered by solar panel now we we designed the boy in such a way that we were able to generate uh, uh, convert wave energy into electricity and that was was used to uh, uh, power the beacon lamp now this whole uh, uh, assembly was tested several times in uh, uh, endor and uh, now it is operational quite well now then essentially the uh, we all know that wave energy essentially needs uh, a huge capital and there has to be a sharing of cost and the most logical uh, way of doing this is to share the wave energy plant's cost with some coastal protection measure. So breakwaters essentially are used uh, as harbor walls as well, uh, to create a kind of tranquil uh, uh, environment uh, uh, inside the harbor so that uh, the boats can be parked uh, and also for as a coastal protection measure. So if wave energy plant shares cost with breakwater, then overall uh, uh, economics of uh, the uh, uh, technology improves significantly. Now, this is not a new concept. This this was uh, studied in IIT Madras in uh, uh, early 80s. And uh, there was proposal of uh, setting up uh, a uh, breakwater-based uh, wave energy plant in uh, Must Bay in Andaman. But somehow that thing was not materialized. But we have continued to uh, uh, work with IIT Madras at uh, at NIT we have continued to work with IIT Madras and uh, now we have a design of uh, a 100 kilowatt uh, uh, peak power uh, uh, plant uh, which uses two oscillating water columns uh, and that in, in turn uses actually total four turbines so uh, we essentially have reached a stage where we uh, we we uh, we have uh, functional design ready and if the funds are avail made available, we can always go ahead with uh, uh, commissioning uh, this design. Now I, I'll uh, turn my attention to uh, hydrokinetic turbines. Uh, as I had mentioned that uh, uh, the water moves, ocean water moves, and uh, because of tides and many other uh, reasons. Uh, and the water possesses kinetic energy just like wind turbines wind possesses kinetic energy and that kinetic energy is converted by wind turbines into useful electricity just like that the water can you know, the in, kinetic energy in what in the water can be converted into uh, useful electricity by uh, employing very similar turbines obviously here the loads are different the sizes are different the water is denser by more than 800 times compared to air but water moves at much lower speeds wind turbine uh, wind can move at uh, 60 kilometers per hour at many places uh, uh, but uh, water moves uh, at much much lower speeds something like say, say one meter per second or uh, say, say two meter per second but then we have found some places in andaman where we carried out measurement uh, 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 using acoustic Doppler uh, current profiler and we found that the, the peak current in the water was almost up to three and a half meter per second. Till then our uh, development of uh, hydrokinetic turbines uh, was limited to uh, a thought that you know the Indian coastal waters has got very low current potential uh, but the recent uh, 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 measurements, recent in the sense, the measurement that we managed to have in 2016 uh, really revealed uh, where uh, was uh, where a revelation. 
so essentially this this uh, adiogenetic turbines also are called as ocean current turbines marine current turbines tidal stream turbines they have uh, two typical uh, uh, kind of types one is cross flow one but uh, one with sing, uh, straight blade and another one with helical blades and then the conventional turbines have got uh, axial flow configuration uh, or conventional wind turbines so similar to that uh, the axial flow uh, uh, turbines also are possible and we have worked on all of this we actually started with very very simple uh, kind of you no know, uh, understanding that you know we wanted to design a turbine which converts uh, the kinetic energy in water uh, in in the uh, in this thing without any uh, theoretical background or uh, we we stuck to the first principles and went through a uh, development uh, create uh, made various uh, uh, small small models and we used a, a wonderful facility uh, uh, in iit madras that is called as towing tank where the water is still and uh, a uh, platform moves along the 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 the, uh, the uh, uh, tank so so al along the length and uh, in, in fact uh, uh, well, this was a use very useful uh, this thing uh, facility which uh, actually paved way for uh, very systematic testing of uh, these okay. turbines so we also uh, made uh, uh, kind of no uh, carry out uh, significant cfd studies in uh, two dimensional uh, two dimensions as well as in three dimensions we made a small unit of which which could generate 100 watt thankfully our cfd studies also matched uh, the predictions also matched experimental values quite uh, quite closely and that gave a kind of a boost to our confidence and then we went ahead uh, to uh, uh, decide to take the turbine to andaman in Andaman, we had to uh, make a floating platform for the turbine. If you can see here that the, the actual turbine is installed at the bottom of platform, and this 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 uh, platform floats using these four uh, kind of the buoyancies. Uh, so essentially, this whole thing was designed uh, here in Chennai and was fabricated in Port Blair, and uh, uh, we ultimately. Uh, obviously this uh, very significant uh, acquisition and data acquisition system comprehensive data acquisition system also had to be put in place and then we tested this turbine in uh, uh, macpherson strait in south andaman this macpherson strait uh, connects andaman sea on east side and the arabian sea on west side and it is between uh, uh, main uh, south andaman district and the ratnan island this was a quite good success uh, here it's not only about say say how much energy we managed to generate it was also about uh, going through a development cycle of turbines and uh, also having a floating device to support the turbine because in marine environment the uh, uh, one is the materials uh, the corrosive atmosphere and all weather kind of no uh, mm, uh, ability to uh, of the device to withstand all the forces and but not only just that uh, it's also important to have a very very rugged mooring system uh, for uh, this uh, turbines uh, because the currents actually uh, uh, exert huge drag force on the structure floating structure so this was a kind of no uh, a revelation for us and also boosted our uh, confidence further these turbines actually operate at much very low speed something like to say a, a few tens of rpm so uh, it is also equally important that we have a, a directly coupled generator so so that development also we are doing in the house here now in the next few minutes uh, i'll uh, go through uh, the ocean thermal energy conversion part and uh, 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 which probably has got a huge scope to become a uh, to provide a base load uh, uh, power uh, for uh, islands at least for islands uh, uh, the you can see that uh, the the red color in this contours uh, actually represent the the temperature difference between the surface sea water and the deep sea water the deep sea wa uh, water in the sense the water at a thousand meter depth and you can see that there are places where the temperature difference uh, goes beyond 24 degrees celsius 
but around indian waters uh, we get temperature difference of 20 uh, plus here you can see that uh, the 1000 meter contour which is a red dotted line uh, which is significantly away from the main shore line but still within ez we can see that uh, there is huge area where the the water depth is more than 1000 meters and incidentally that uh, uh, the seas uh, all the oceans have got one something uh, very very uh, uh, there is something stabilizing the oceans because of huge mass that wherever you go at 1000 meter depth especially in the tropical areas you are bound to get uh, much much lower temperature so if the surface temperature remains between say the 28 and more Uh, and if the temperature uh, at uh, deep sea it, uh, remains at uh, say something like say six, seven, or eight degrees Celsius, we are able to have a uh, temperature difference of twenty degrees Celsius, which it is said that you know sufficient to have a, a viable OTEC plant. Here you can see that uh, huge area where the OTEC uh, 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 the requisite temperature difference of 20 degrees Celsius and more is possible and it is not only about uh, uh, looking uh, looking uh, our uh, thinking should be limited to only indian ez when the technology is developed we will be in position to even help other countries like say maldives where uh, uh, where they really need uh, energy resource and uh, they have the geography uh, uh, that is conducive to that and then there are many tropical islands uh, around the uh, uh, globe which will get benefited so in this uh, uh, development of ocean thermal energy conversion there are many uh, many other countries also which are very actively in, involved uh, Uh, USA already has put up a 100 kilowatt plant in Hawaii. Uh, then uh, you, uh, Japan has put a, a 100 kilowatt plant in uh, Kumejima uh, Prefecture, uh, and uh, we also are in process of setting up a uh, open cycle OTEC plant in uh, Lakshadweep. Obviously, I'll, I'll come to that point in a minute or uh, two or three minutes. So essentially, it is a rank and cycle is what. it needs to be uh, uh, run through the uh, the temperature uh, that we get from the surface sea uh, and the deep sea essentially at 1000 meters you can see that now then th these are the two types of uh, 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 we can say the, the two two types of uh, otex systems which is closed cycle system where a, a refrigerant kind of uh, uh, refrigerant like say, say ammonia is made to run through this system uh, this is rank and cycle system which is very simple similar to a conventional steam power plant or say any organic rank and cycle uh, system and uh, mm, uh, the the deep sea water essentially condenses the uh, ammonia then uh, uh, the liquid ammonia is pressurized through a pump then the surface sea water evaporates this high pressure am ammonia to uh, saturated vapor then the turbine ex uh, uh, this uh, vapor expands in turbine and low pressure low temperature uh, wet vapor again passes through otec condenser now this is very uh, familiar uh, uh, system the only thing in this case is the this refrigerant has to have the, the property of evaporation at around say, 24 25 degrees celsius uh, temperature and it has to have ability to uh, condense at temperature of around say, 14 degrees celsius the second part is open cycle otec where uh, water vapor is flashed in a chamber which is kept at very low pressure now the the water that is fed is surface sea water that is uh, around say uh, around say, say 28 29 30 degrees celsius so uh, if we keep the pressure of this flash chamber to something less than 3 kilopascal uh, we will be able to evaporate uh, boil this uh, uh, water and part of this this vapor uh, the water is flashed it goes through a turbine expands and then this uh, expands and uh, does work and exp uh, this uh, electricity can be generated and then this wet vapor can be condensed using deep sea water now if we take out this turbine then the vapor can still be condensed in the condenser and if we use a uh, surface condenser the condenser can be used for drinking because it is going to be a pure uh, water yeah so there was an effort uh, very ambitious uh, experiment that was uh, 
uh, taken up by uh, an IOT in the uh, late na- 90s. Uh, the target of was kept at one megawatt. It was a floating power plant, and uh, the net power that was uh, expected out of it was 605 kilowatt. Unfortunately, uh, the the net power was uh, could not be uh, really uh, generated because the it needed a one kilometer long pipe, which was to be fitted beneath this floating pad platform. And when it was towed to the location because of rough weather, that pipe was lost and uh, uh, um, uh, uh, it could not be traced. This pipe is made up of HDPE and HDPE could not be really traced. So unfortunately, this, uh, this trials had to be abandoned. But then we continued working on the uh, systems. We develop, We have set up a laboratory in the NIT campus where we have a closed cycle OTEX setup as well as we have a open cycle OTEX setup. We have developed a turbine ourselves in a house which can generate uh, uh, electricity from the very, very low pressure. You can see that this is a ultra low pressure turbine that we have developed. And on left hand side, you can see uh, R134A turbine uh, that is used for closed cycle OTEX. Now, the spin-off of desalination is very obvious, which, which I just now explained. And we have already three plants, uh, uh, NIT has set up three plants in Kavratti, Minikoy, and Agatti. And uh, six more plants are coming up in uh, uh, Lashdip Islands. And we also are uh, in process of uh, setting up one OTEC power, uh, power desalination plant in Kavratti. There has been uh, uh, some work in the desalination area also exclusively. There has been an effort to uh, uh, have a, a demonstration plant that could, a floating demonstration plant that could uh, generate one mel- mega, uh, one million liters per day uh, desalinated water. Uh, then there is another interesting concept. Uh, excuse me, how much time do I have? Yeah, another three minutes. Three minutes. I think I think more than enough for me. Uh, so uh, uh, then, this on the right hand side, you can see a, a waste heat recovery based uh, uh, low temperature thermal desalination plant that is set up at uh, that was set up at uh, North Air Chennai Thermal Power Station. Essentially, the condenser reject water is warm, and uh, uh, it uh, is used. It is flash. A part of that uh, condenser reject water is flashed inside the uh, flash chamber, and that is condensed using surface seawater. So, so coastal power thermal power stage power plants essentially use the surface seawater from open sea and uh, uh, for uh, cooling in the condenser. So, so it th- this two streams provide temperature difference. Now, uh, there is an ambitious project uh, uh, of uh, setting up a two million liters per day plant that is coming up in Tuticoti. Uh, in, interestingly, uh, you can uh, notice that uh, uh, we have to deal with, uh, as a ocean in, uh, uh, renewable energy developers, uh, we ha- we are dealing with several types of turbine configuration. You can see from just if I have to simply read it, uh, wave energy uses air turbines. They have they can there can be unidirectional impulse turbine, bidirectional impulse turbine, hydrokinetic turbine, uh, uh, hydrokinetic energy can be exploited using cross flow actual flow turbines and OTEC turbines are unconventional though they can be designed with conventional wisdom that is the real wonderful outcome of our efforts is that these are not very different turbines they are actually conventional turbines they can be designed using conventional steam turbine uh, design principles just that they operate in a very very weird conditions they so that that means they need to be designed considering those conditions so they can be axial flow, uh, red, uh, as well as radial inward flow. Uh, some, some this closed cycle turbine operate at, uh, uh, using anhydrous ammonia. They are multi-stage turbines, whereas open cycle turbine that we are at the moment uh, working with uh, uh, uses water vapor. It is single stage turbines. So what so far we have done is we have been able to carry out significant amount of laboratory studies and uh, 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 a lot of academic studies we have uh, been able to do. We have already crossed uh, technology readiness level of five and more uh, in case of wave energy as well as hydrokinetic turbine as well as OTEC power cycle. But what really needs next to be uh, that needs to be achieved is we really need to achieve advanced levels of technology readiness. 
we also need to work on improve econ economic prospects essentially economic prospects uh, are good if the costs are low and the revenue is high so essentially we need to work on reduce capital cost by sharing uh, with other technology for example wind and wave can go together because they, wherever there is wind on the ocean there are going to be waves or other way if there are waves it, there is bound to be a wind more often than not so so we also need to work on small to medium scale deployment and then we have to have a competitive learning curve this is very important part because every renewable energy technology has gone through a kind of you no know, huge amount of learning where initially the deployments were very small the scales were very small and the cost were prohibitively higher prohibitively higher in the beginning but as the work continued on the development of technology as the scales increased the cost per say uh, kilowatt actually have has reduced significantly that has happened in terms of photovoltaic uh, 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 power uh, generation as well as it has happened with uh, wind power generation uh, and recently the same thing is happening with offshore wind also so so for all this wave energy uh, and kinetic and otec we need to have a learning curve and for this we need to have a uh, uh, uh more de deployments thank you so much actually uh, for giving this opportunity to uh, uh, sensitize uh, very light mass of engineers here uh, 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 about ocean renewable energy and what so far we have been able to do here thank you so much thank you uh, engineer tasad minaik for this informative session and your experience is helping all all the engineers to go forward you know, who is researching in this particular field now let me introduce the second panelist panelist number 2 dr subramanian nelamani senior research scientist coastal management program environment and life safe life science research center kuwait institute for scientific research kuwait Let me go through his uh, profile. Dr. S. Nelamani is a senior research scientist, Coastal Management Program, Kuwait Institute of Scientific Research, Kuwait. He has obtained PhD from Indian Institute of Technology, Madras, in 1990, and was teaching in the Department of Ocean Engineering in IIT Madras from 1990 to 2003. He had also served as NCC officer, sports advisor at IIT Madras. He was the recipient of the Alexander von Humboldt Postdoctoral Research Fellowship, Germany, during 1996 to 1998. Dr. Nilamani has published more than 350. scientific papers in the reputed international and national journals and conferences he has also published many articles in newspapers and books on topics useful for the scientist he has coordinated about 860 research projects 60 consultancy projects and 40 scientific training programs in the area of coastal engineering his specialization is physical modeling on coastal and ocean structures ocean energy and marine environmental issues dr milamani was stored with a scientific achievement award by kuwait institute for scientific research for five times since 2009 for his distinguished scientific contribution and achievements he was also awarded the engineer of the year by tamil nadu engineers forum quit during 2016 and lifetime achievement award in the area of coastal engineering by venus international research foundation chennai 
India during 2016. Dr. Nilamani holds three US patents as lead inventor and many recognitions from around the world for these inventions. These US patents won gold and silver medal in the International Innovation Exhibition in Zurich, Switzerland and Germany. His hobby is guidance and counseling of school children to exceed in their life. We invite Dr. Supermani Neeramani for lecture section number two on ocean energy application and wave forward. Dr. Subramaniam Neeramani, you have the screen sharing control. Please unmute your microphone as you speak. Over to you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I hope the screen is visible. Hello? Not that. Not that. Not, not that. Not that? Okay. Oh, sir, screen is not yet visible, sir. Ah, okay. I'm. Okay, where is the control? Yeah. Show my screen. Okay, I'm clicking. Show my screen. Yes, sir. Is coming. Yes. Ah, it's coming. Okay, okay, good, good. Thank you. I am opening the full screen. Yes, full screen is visible. It is visible, yes, right? Full screen. Thank you very much yes, for introducing me. It is visible. Me. It is visible, visible eh? Yes, okay, sir. Fine, fine. I can continue now. Thank you, Engineer Joseph Fadiga, for your nice introduction, and IEA. India for giving me an opportunity to exchange uh, some of my learnings in ocean, ocean energy for almost like 210 attendees here in this platform. Thank you very much. My presentation uh, will be both sharing my experience as well as a little bit of uh, fundamental for uh, college students and researchers. Also, I will share my experience. In fact, 1989, when I finished my PhD in Ocean Engineering Department, IIT Madras, the first job I was with uh, Ocean Energy, Wave Energy Project, uh, with Professor Raju, Professor Ravindran, and a lot of people, they were all working. So that was my first job before I became faculty at IIT. So I was in the field in Trandrum, the, the wave energy project and the slide that um, engineer Prasad was showing. So Professor Raju gave me the responsibility of uh, monitoring the field construction, stability of the floating structure during towing, seating them on a particular place, preparation of the seabed, so all these aspects, it was very, very challenging uh, experience. I still remember completely the experience of working in the energy project. Uh, in fact, all these experiences of our um, problems and how we successfully installed the wave energy caisson, it's all documented and published, it's all available. Then after joining as faculty at IIT Madras, few of my, first few of my students for PhD and master, they were working on wave energy, especially on wave forces, on wave energy structure, uh, efficiency of wave energy conversion, wave impact load on the elements of the wave energy structure. So like that, because of the motivation from the field work, I was focusing on wave energy for uh, my research at the beginning. Uh, in fact, I was very, very enthusiastic. I, I don't even now believe I was so enthusiastic uh, for taking the wave energy to the next level along with others. Uh, for Musbe Andaman, also to Tangasheri, Tangasheri in Kerala, we were planning for one megawatt multi-level wave energy caisson come breakwater as uh, Mr. Uh, Prasad was explaining. So we were trying to do that work. 
these are so enthusiastic to do that work uh, even um, uh, one of my ms student trivandrum uh, he did work on uh, this type of uh, structure multi purpose wave energy device focusing on uh, force uh, stability wave power um, uh, efficiency so it was like that very wonderful um, day those days i remember anyway i will share some of my experiences while we go through this um this one i am going to focus on i i don't want to repeat what mr prasad said so uh, i will skip some of the slides why ocean energy different form of uh, energy from ocean potentials so in general he covered some of these things even some working principles he covered challenges in terms of technology development economic and environmental issues even we were working on economics uh, parallelly while we while we were technology in development those days few of our papers in uh, wave energy economics we were we published in some of the conferences we have available opportunities and challenges finally um particularly some of the message i wanted to give for researchers research scholars who are doing phd Uh, so some message from my experience i want to share okay there is no need why wave energy is ocean energy is required because world population is increasing number 1 number 2 energy consumption per capita is also increasing you see both of them are increasing so for example you see this line for india in good olden days during 1990 per head 0.5 ton of oil is enough for a year whereas now per head we need about almost 2 ton of oil equivalent of oil of energy we need so population is increasing energy per capita is increasing and uh, this is what the projection in future for the whole world whole world also during 1960 on an average per head we are consuming something like 1 ton equivalent of energy during 1960 after industrialization and after we allowed to use energy now it is forecast is it is increasing linearly so 2100 per head we may need more than 2.5 ton of oil equivalent of energy per year so because of all these things and and then uh, that is on one side other side environmental awareness we all know that environment slowly is degrading there is no uh, there is no uh, this proof it is true environment is slowly degrading because of that slowly see for example you see this picture slowly the hardcore hydrocarbon fuel wood coal oil these are all hardcore hydrocarbons their use is slowly is reducing because of the environmental degradation the world wanted to pollute the atmosphere with less amount per head so because of this attitude slowly as time goes we will uh, stop using um, we will not stop using but we will reduce to use coal wood oil all those things and then which will increase the renewable power only will increase which is not polluting the atmosphere so this is an indication of um, different sources of power use in the future so because of this we have to focus on different renewable energy so this is from atmospheric environmental point of view third is economic point of view uh, we will discuss about that or i will discuss right now 2 minutes see it is well proved that economy of coal power hydro power oil power they are all well proved people can easily tell how much is power production per kilowatt hour because of commercialization the last 40 50 years commercial level coal plants were running hydro plants were running oil based power plants are running so people know how much is per kilowatt hour whereas when you talk about renewable energy 
a good um, uh, uncertain less uncertain estimate of economic is known for solar and wind because it is also already commercialized in uh, different countries so we know and what we know now solar power and wind power they are competitive economically this also we know from the recent commercialization aspect around the world what we do not know is what is um, a kilowatt hour production from many of the ocean energy we do not know reason we don't have big commercial level plant okay now two minutes we will again focus on environment the temperature change it is it is predicted like this 2100 if we keep moving the the way we generate power from coal oil and our lifestyle continues like that the temperature may rise to 6 to 7 degree fahrenheit and that cannot be allowed because it will create very significant problem irreversible problem for human life also to the life path irreversible process so that cannot be allowed this line cannot be allowed so we should try to go to the this green line what we are showing here it is a real challenge green line is a line with very little of hydrocarbon based power plant production power use so but uh, but uh, there is no escape we should go try to follow this line or closer to this part reason um, if we try to follow the pathway we live today the carbon dioxide equivalent in the atmosphere may cross 1000 ppm if it is uh, see right now the co2 equivalent is closer to 380 ppm imagine three times increase by 2100 means every one of us has to carry oxygen cylinder at our back there is no way and the associated um, virus new type of virus we are talking about corona imagine uh, because of this environmental degrade the new type of virus bacteria that will generate and and the way we will uh, live imaginable is it is it, it is really a tough uh, one to imagine so we have to follow low pathway as a coastal engineer we are also worried about sea level rise if temperature rise by 2 to degree 2 to 3 degree centigrade sea level also will rise almost like 1 meter in 2100 so we have, we have to know this if the whole ice melts from northern southern hemisphere the sea level will rise almost 20 meter so you can imagine what will happen to coastal cities so as a coastal engineer i am more worried about this phenomena uh, along with uh, how to commercialize ocean energy okay because of all these things uh, these are all the thrust why we have to go for renewable energy in general and uh, why we have to go to ocean energy we will see next ocean energy area is a very very interesting technological area for research this i can tell because there are a lot of uh, things we do not know even now technically we do not know a lot of things so uh, because of my 1980 89 when i was working we do not know a lot of things wave forces on the case on efficiency of conversion wave impact load we do not know but then uh, based on our research we we came to know to some extent but then research is still continuing for accurate assessment of all these things so there are a lot of researchers who wanted to do breakthrough technological innovation so that way ocean energy area is a way for this type of uh, study uh, for we are very common um, uh, people i wanted to tell one message so for example the green color here indicates the solar radiation falling on the earth and the energy due to solar radiation this green color box this small box inside the red color box is the energy the whole globe is needing so you can imagine how much of energy is available from solar energy itself 
and how much of energy we need almost like 1 by thousands of times the solar energy is our requirement basically and solar energy is one way or other is the source of almost all type of ocean energy uh, including tidal energy because tidal energy is contribution is also from sun apart from moon otherwise wave energy is indirectly a form of solar energy solar radiation in, induces pressure difference on the globe pressure difference creates wind movement wind movement creates the gravity wave so that way sun is a main source for um, most of the energy forms on the earth two things i wanted to emphasize in this see commercialization if we we have to go towards commercialization two things is a focus one is on the overall efficiency of the power renewable power so right now if you see for example you take a solar thermal it is about 18% efficient so any research to increase the efficiency will help for more commercialization similarly if you talk about ocean thermal the overall efficiency is so small it is 2.7% to 3% <laughs> that is what the overall efficiency the reason is most of the energy you produce in water you you have to spend it on the power plant itself for pushing the fluid for compressing the um, fluid so you have to use a lot of power to be produced in water so only very little power is available finally to the grid so focus one focus is on efficiency improvement how we have to do it we have to focus on this another focus is from economical aspect what is the cost in terms of rupee or dollar whatever it is per kilowatt hour production this is another important thing yeah see here only uh, comes all the all the thing related to civil engineering cost how to reduce civil engineering cost how to reduce mechanical electrical engineering cost how to reduce the risk on the structure we are going to build and install in the ocean how to increase their life everything comes here so each um, area is um, it is possible to do research and bring out um, solution so these two are the main focus if we wanted to take ocean energy as a commercial level in the future so uh, just one minute i have i got to say see the whole world by 2025 needs about 35 to 40 million megawatt that is what our requirement you see how much is available in different form ocean thermal itself is about 1000 times and ocean wave energy itself is see this is 2.5 trillion watt so like that we have huge um, energy from ocean in different forms salinity gradient bio ocean bio marine current wave wind also tide they are all available in india itself we have about 1 lakh megawatt of wave uh, current and tide next message you see the potential source of uh, all this energy may be huge but we cannot be able to extract all the energy available finally when we go to um, real extraction market potential it will be it will be very less because of um, technical feasibility economic feasibility when we doing this analysis we will come to know market potential may be a smaller part of whole resource potential for example around india we have about 40000 megawatt of wave energy around india but what is really possible after technical and economic analysis only 1/4 or 1 1/5 only is possible particularly in the arabian sea in bay of bengal it is not possible the reason is we have to build the wave energy system for cyclone impact 
there has to be extractive energy for energy which is uh, something uh, 1 by 10 or 1 by 20th of cyclone induced wave energy. So you have to design for elephant, but you, the working condition is for a small bull. So it is like that. So it will not work for um, Bay of Bengal. Whereas it will work in uh, Arabian Sea because Arabian Sea uh, the cyclone intensities are less. So now if you go to motion energy, so quickly I will uh, skip uh, some of the things. Um, ocean energy technology development, many countries around the world, they are all involved, including India. But then some of the countries, they are spending a lot of money for research, like UK and the US, Canada. They are spending a lot of money for research, and here it is India, it is here. Um, the message I wanted to tell here, um, this message, uh, many of many people may not like uh, the message what I am telling, but I have to tell this message. See, during research, if people expect return for the research, it will not work. Because this particular message I wanted to give, this is a message I am giving from 1990 after my experience working with wave energy. Because when I was working on wave energy, that time, it was 150 kilowatt capacity. Government of India gave 4 crore rupees for 150 kilowatt. It was a very, you see, if somebody works out, for 150 kilowatt, you are spending 4 crore. Uh, in terms of commercialization, it, it will not work. Because it is not a commercialization plant. 150 kilowatt is a research prototype plant. So there were a lot of objections from so many people, including people from uh, my own department, ocean engineering. Lot of objections for, for us to do the work. See, people should understand when you do research, first you start your work in the laboratory. And then you understand, you learn the knowledge. Then you have to go to the field for a small pilot plant. There also you have to, you are learning, you are in the learning process of many things. You are trying to solve technical problem. There was so much of objection from the department, from many people. You see, we were, were those days, we, we felt very, very sad, no? In spite of uh, trying to solve the problem, many people were objecting. But I will tell you, when we, we all successfully done the work, where, when uh, the, the people who created the idea the people who worked for wave energy, we all left from uh, from the place. Professor Raju, Professor Ravindran, Dr. Kula, also myself, we all left. Then you see, people who were objecting the project, they were taking the project as a project uh, leader. You see the pity. So this is how the things go. So this is a really a very bad habit, I, I have to tell. The people should encourage new type of technology people should not expect any return at the research level. You have you have to cross so many hurdles. 150 kilowatt build, we learned a lot of things in the construction, installation, successful installation. For me, it was a first time experience. I know at one point of time, I was working on um, stability of the structure. So one point of time, you know, people working on floating body dynamics, you may know it. The GM value came to negative. So if anybody pulls the structure face on into the sea, it will, it will, 180 degrees, it will overtopple. So then we try to make it positive. Lot of things we, we learned. So the four crore rupees the government of India spent those days, more than 200 people were trained. This is what the great success. Then uh, you had to go to one megawatt, learn. You had to go to 10 megawatt, learn. This is the time we had to work out economics. So like that, this particular point, I, I was looking for an opportunity to express my view, and this is the right platform, because many people from India, they are attending this program. This particular message, I am very, very clear, I wanted to give to the scientific society. Because other countries, you see, um, uh, UK, they are spending billions of uh, dollars every year uh, for ocean energy. But still, they have not come to any commercial plan. But certainly, they will they will do commercial plans in future, and they will reap all the profit selling the knowledge to the world. 
So this is the way technology has to develop. Okay. So then uh, when you talk about the number of uh, systems uh, in OTEC, Salinity, Tide, Wave, around the world, each each country, for example, Canada, if you see, they have tidal barrage. They also have um, pilot plant of waves. Also, they have tidal um, current energy, like that. So a lot of countries, they are spending their time manpower is um, working on commercialization some of them will reach soon so ocean thermal energy already um, was discussed so i am not going to spend my time on this uh, this was a typical picture of uh, the mios uh, attempt for one megawatt uh, during 1990s they, they were working on this and uh, you know the principle um, from uh, mr prasad he was explaining you there's a principle of um, open and closed system. So this is why you skip. Uh, this is a closed system, the principle. You, you know already from this lecture. Also, people um, see when so you work on. You have uh, yeah. two more minutes. Two more minutes. OK, thank you very much. So ocean thermal energy have a lot of uh, benefits. In fact, the cold water can be used for aquaculture. So both uh, advantages and disadvantages are there in ocean energy, uh, but we have to learn it. We have to reduce, try to reduce our disadvantages. Wave energy, uh, this again uh, already discussed in a lot. Only thing I wanted to tell you is the average energy around India is about 14 to 15 compared to 70 or 80 in northern southern hemisphere. That way, wave energy alone will not be economical, it has to be multi-purpose, as um, other people were talking. And again, um, though we were working on ocean um, oscillating water column, there are many other forms around the world people are working around the world. Uh, since lack of time, I am just to uh, uh, keep moving. So these are all some of the power plants at pilot level in different countries, US, Canada, Denmark, a uh, different way of converting. And this is what uh, the typical uh, one um, uh, we use in India. So this is the one that gave me an opportunity to learn a lot. So I really thank uh, that particular uh, group for uh, the support. Okay, I will move to uh, the challenges, one minute. Site selection, suitable site selection is required. Uh, the input is highly random, whereas you need output without much of randomness. High wave forces acting on the structure, stability of the structure, these are all the forces, these are all the challenges. So each one is a topic for PhD, and we can work to solve this problem. Okay, then again, wave power economics. Um, for an engineer, this is also another important uh, aspect when we work on ocean energy. We have to always work on wave power economics, considering uh, different inputs. Okay, I will go out, tidal energy. Ocean currents also, um, engineer, uh, and follow, you see, already discussed about this, so I'm also skipping this. Offshore wind energy, the, the merit of offshore wind energy, I have to say, I have to say, uh, in the offshore, the, the wind are less turbulent compared to onshore, and the offshore, in general, the wind speeds are more compared to onshore, because when the wind reaches onshore, it dissipates a lot of the energy, that is the reason people mostly focus on offshore, even though it is a little bit more expensive. Some of the barriers for commercialization, awareness and information is one. Aversion for taking risk, this is, this is the one um, we should overcome. Youngsters should be encouraged to take risk. And financial and economical issue, financial and economic issue should always will be part of uh, commercialization aspect of ocean energy. But we should try to spend more money 
to develop the technology and then make it indigenous. That is most important. There is no point buying the technology after 10 years from US or from Western Europe. It will not work. We have to develop our um, indigenous technology. Even we were talking during those days. So we have to do that. Um, many technical problems are solved now in wave energy that I am very, very much aware of. Still, some more problems are there. Uh, lack of institutional and regulatory system is one uh, hurdle. And behavior of the consumer as well as behavior of in general, the researchers and um, whatever it is that need to be um, watched carefully. Pessimism among the people need to be removed. So this is uh, important. To conclude, ocean energy, uh, you all know renewable, pollution free, available in abundance, may be expensive today, definitely, but it will become competitive in future. So we have to boldly, we have to take um, decision, put our effort, solve the technical problem, uh, and we should uh, run to go for commercialization of uh, uh, wave energy, tidal energy, and water, particularly in India. These three are a great source of energy. More than one lakh megawatt is available. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm uh, closing now. Thank you, Dr. Nilamani, for sharing your knowledge, as well as being a critic. What, uh, you know, how the government see, they also see on the benefit on today. If there's a benefit, they go for that. And if uh, the benefit is in future, they don't think immediately. Thank you for that uh, eye of my talk. Now, we are introducing the third panelist, Dr. R. Venkateshan. He is a scientist, senior scientist, head Ocean Observation System, National Institute of Ocean Technology, Chennai, Ministry of Earth Science, Government of India. Dr. R. Venkatesh is a senior scientist and program director at the National Institute of Ocean Technology, Chennai, Government of India. He is the founder Chairman of uh, Kanchipuram Local Center, IEI. Former IEI Council Member, IEI Aluminus and IEI Fellow. He is also Fellow of Marine Technology Society, USA, and NACE, USA. He, he has earned his PhD from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. PG Diploma in Marine Pollution Management from Annamalai University. PG Diploma in Maritime Law from Ambedkar Law University and BSc from Commonwealth University. He is responsible for the mood observ observatories installed in coastal open ocean and Arctic waters. He specialized in field activities and had sailed on board for 2,500 days. I believe I am correct. 2,500 days and visited Arctic to install observatory and tested material coupons. Dr. Vignitesh worked under United Nations UNEP regulation C's program at SACEP Colombo, Sri Lanka for five South Asian countries, Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, Maldives, Sri Lanka, and result impasse on MOU on the regional OII contingency plan and led delegation 
to United Nations meetings. He is the chair of four committees in United Nations related organizations and represent India, Indian government in many committees. He led delegation to meetings in UN headquarters networks such as UNEP, Kenya, WMO, Geneva, UNESCO, IOC Paris, associated with CII and ASSO CHAM, members of committees, chairman of technical societies like MTS, IEE, OES, and IEI local chapter, etc. Dr. Vindication has published three books, 120 papers, filed six patents, great, four technology transfers to industry to his credit. Dr. Vengitation is a recipient of 16 international and national awards, such as Outstanding Service Certificate from UN bodies of UNS UNESCO, IOC Paris, WMO Geneva, recognizing his global contribution. MTS Fellow Award, USA MTS Lockheed Ma Ma Martin Award, as Alaska USA, MOE's Government of India Award, National Geoscience Award from Honorable President, Tamil Nadu State Science Award, NIGIS Meritorious Award, NDRF Award, NRDC Innovation Award, Moscot Award, Best PhD Thesis Award by NIGIS. Dr. Vengitation is also teaching in IIT Madras, Karakpur, Bhuvaneshwar, and member of Research Advisory Board of Virginia Tech India. AMET University, AMET University, Senate member of Pedia University, Salem, member of Tamil Nadu State Coastal Zone Authority. He has visited 38 countries in his 37 years of illustrious career in the field of ocean science and technology, and is a Fulbright Fellowship Award of USA. He holds two important positions in United Nations bodies, Chair of GRA of UNESCO, IOC Paris, and Vice Chair of LGOIS Geneva. We invite Dr. R. Vengateshan for lecture session three on ocean energy, application and way forward. Dr. R. Vengateshan, you have the screen sharing control. Please unmute your mic, microphone while you are speaking. Thank you. Please share your Uh, are you are you able to see my screen? No. Yes. 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 It is good. Okay. I'm not able to see, and I'm not able to see. And uh, what about my voice? And can you the check? I'm not able to see my screen. I'm not able to see. Mr. Sen, the voice is. Uh, I, I believe it's a bit far Yeah, your voice is audible. Yes. No, screen, I can see only both of us. Uh, earlier I was seeing the full screen. Uh, yeah, but uh, your uh, first page is visible. We are all here, sir, please. <laughs> no, I am not able to see. Oh, you are not able to see, yeah? Uh? Sir, please, uh, please oh, turn so on your webcam. Turn on your webcam, sir. Uh, I can see. The... Sir, just uh, turn on the do webcam. other tab and choose the other window. Other window. I am seeing that. Can you can you come out of that? Okay, Make a presenter. You are made me presenter. Part one is also visible, sir. Presentation is also visible. Wait one minute. Are you able to see next? 
Yes, sir. Second page? I can't see. Yes, yes, sir. No, no, not second page, first page. No, no, no we are seeing first page. See. One page we can yeah, see, one page. page. Oh, yeah, let me come out of that quint. How is it now? No, sir. It's a hot light. No, I, I can't see that. How is it now? Is it uh, are you able to see second page? Ah, uh, now now click click now and show my screen. My screen. Yeah. Ah, uh, wait a minute. Yeah. Yes. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same now. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, I am under control. Thank you very much. Thanks you. Thank you, Mr. Joseph, and thank you, Dr. Nilamani. Thank you, Mr. Prasad, and uh, I, I welcome all the uh, invitees and participants who are uh, come over here and sparing your time. It's really a great honor for me to be part of this uh, important webinar, and uh, I'm closely associated with uh, IEI. And uh, it's really hard to me and homecoming to this uh, uh, important activity of IEI. So, what we thought uh, it has been well uh, discussed last more than an hour by Dr. Nilamani and Mr. Prasad. I'll be just adding on to some practical experience on some of these projects, what they have done, uh, what we have done in India. And I'm, I'll not uh, repeat whatever they have already conveyed to all of you. So, this is to nutshell to say this is what is in importance. And other clerk uh, said that you have been called as oceanus, and we call it as a planet Earth, because uh, the air what we breathe, and the water what we drink, the food what we eat, the climate what we live in, all depends on this ocean. Now, in India, we are strategically located. Uh, uh, you can see that this landmass of uh, uh, Asia is blocking the Indian Ocean, connect, uh, connecting to between these polar region, which is very common, which is seen in uh, in Atlantic and Pacific. I always say in my class, what's the difference between three major oceans? The Indian Ocean is blocked by this. That is leading to monsoon and typical what we have in our waters. So we see more sea than others. What is important for us is now we have understood the importance of. Uh, having this water body around us and India is being a fast growing economy and enhanced budget for allotment of R&D and we have large school of uh, full of uh, scientific and technical expertise including more research activities in the last two decades, two decades in the ocean waters and we have our own research vessels and we have technology institute more than 23 years old our institute and our annual budget is more including the ship cost and many other things we, we are much better on and much well, better equipped. Now, I always say in this particular picture, when you talk about South Asia, if you look at the population, the population growth has expanded and close to 100 kilometers. Uh, we are uh, living along the coast. And if you look at the major component is uh, this part of South Asia and also the China. This is what, if you look at the uh, heaviness of the earth with the population, this is much more heavier. And uh, we, we have very big uh, coastal cities, any coastal disaster, any activity that is going to be affected over there. We have experienced tsunami and many other things. So that has led us to look at these waters, not only for recreation purpose, look at it in a different perspective. And we have a very large amount of uh, oil uh, tanker traffic in this region and fishing, particularly artisan and mechanized fishes are much, much more. And you will be surprised we all, uh, uh, Which Dr. Nilamani has said, if anything you want to establish coastal insulation and we are going on, we need to have a higher cost because uh, there are more four, four times more cyclone in we are going on than in Arabian Sea. It, this puts us to think about more scientifically. We are working with uh, other international experts and we sail with them. There's a larger amount of interest to study about we are going on. Now, these are all the interests what you have got to measure the potential and to have for the readiness or the forecast warning. We have these observatories floating, drifting, anchored. They are all there. I'm not saying much in detail, but this is what in the recent days our uh, understanding about our waters is increasing a lot. When you talk about energy, we, we cannot uh, uh, miss anything. We cannot uh, leave away this important topic, which is 
talked in the very highest decision making level this is called blue economy blue economy is a source of opportunity where investment and growth will take place when you talk about blue economy the major discussion is again on energy how best this it really does call blue economy now we call blue green economy so there is a particular island nations like maldives and other cases this blue economy even seychelles is the first country to declare blue economy is an important aspect for them so among all the great challenges energy security is important that's what we are all here when you talk about energy security renewable energy is playing a major role we do have sovereignty and security in natural hazards with food security biodiversity conservation dealing with changing climate and optimal resource allocation among them we will discuss more about energy security the united report united nation environment uh, program report talks clearly about how the transition is taking place from the low carbon resource efficient green economy that is possible so why we are talking about renewable energy what is its relevant to india i am not dwelling much in detail now to nilamani has very nicely presented it we have a very large uh, geographical area within the ez There's a lot of potential for us to understand about it, and we are tropical country. So any technology what we develop, I'm going to show about that. That's more specific. If you don't do, others cannot do. We can't buy this technology. So we know about wind, wave, current, tidal, water, and salinity. So this was well discussed earlier. I'm not going in detail. This is about simple picture and representation of three important uh, energies. And historically, it was also discussed, and this gives a nice. how we started way back in 1980 and iit madras played a major role and we had a wave energy plan which dr minila mani has mentioned we had more than about more than a decade of data from these wave energy plant now we went on to otec i was part of a, a, a team where led the delhi team to re, uh, construct the otec plant in goa and we had our own mica misap and we are again reviving in with a different technology we are approaching which mr prasad discussed about the backward direct boy which is really useful the other side of wave energy plan the tidal energy is so so much potential is there there is a, a big project coming up in uh, kalpasar project where in gulf of kambi it is going to be connected our institute is uh, involved in that where there could be chance for the tidal energy this is just recently yesterday i, I read about this how the new tidal turbine is being awarded i had an opportunity to visit marine institute in uh, canada there's a lot of work being done like uh, dr nilamani said there is a conventional way of uh, uh, the thinking is changing there's more uh, knowledge to it about biomimicking it trying to learn from the nature how whether they can be fixed propellers or moving so these are all the changes which is happening in understanding about that again wave he has very nicely put in a single slide what is the wave potential all over the world and in india he spoke about 14 and this is a project yes this is a water uh, plant bottom one is sagar shakti which we had disbanded we don't have it now if you talk about offshore wind energy we will discuss more about it because other speakers have not mentioned about that where indian government is uh, playing a major role now we have a potential in tamil nadu course about 120 gigawatt that's what is the study says we have a separate institute anyway who are working on is wind energy plan our responsibility here is to design of a structure which can be installed in offshore and the national offshore wind energy policy india has evolved it and mnri has uh, evolved this plan it is to promote deployed offshore wind farms and uh, promote r&d and to promote investment in the energy infrastructure and to promote spatial planning and management in addition to that marine spatial planning is in a big topic which is coming up our government of india our ministry is uh, playing a major role when marine spatial spatial planning comes we can define what activity can be taken up in a particular area that can be well defined including the protecting the interests of the our communities in that region and the salient features of the policy i am not saying in detail we need to have an eia study we are well established in that we need to have a preliminary resource assessment that is what we are doing it now and the fiscal and monetary benefit because any of the investment we need to have these information because the feasibility part to be taken up the challenging difference compared to the land based one and the ocean basis the cost or the recurring expenditure is exponential offshore we are well off and more than 40 years we have been working on it we are trying to go for deeper and deeper waters but the challenge is on the environmental effect and the design part which uh, we have improved a lot in the recent days in designing and understanding about that 
I'm not dwelling much in detail. And we are going deeper and deeper waters. And there is also a challenge of uh, economic or the environmental issues which need to be addressed. But of course, more and more production efforts are happening, and uh, the our requirement is also increasing. This is also one aspect which is being looked at. It. This is another area which uh, North Sea have come across. We are also interested on uh, offshore mariculture and uh, coastal aquaculture, where the abundant. Uh, offshore plants are being used in Norway. They said a person owning such a uh, offshore aquaculture is considered to be a king. So much amount of resource and income is available. Even there is something called about biofouling on the offshore structure. There is also a larger interest to have the economic benefit out of that. So these are all uh, some spin-off. When you talk about the main thing that could be spin-off, we will discuss more about some cases where the spin-off would take place. This I teach in IIT Madras. What is important to know about this maritime law? Whenever we are doing such activity, we need to have take note of it. There are also some regulations which need to be followed in the design stage and during the operation stage also, particularly the IMO, MARPOL, as well as the London Dumping Act and the discharge from the particularly HF uh, and anti fouling uh, Convention. They all talks about that. In addition to that, uh, the uh, whatever the gas is noxious gas is liberated from these plants that need to be looked at that so we cannot uh, whenever we talk about other side we are talking about renewable energy but related to that these aspects need to be taken coming back to our institute i'll briefly introduce this institute originally was established in iit madras now we have completed 25 years we work on energy water food and natural hazards like tsunami early warning and we also work with industry particularly for port and harbor and these are all the technology for the society activity. I will discuss more about the desalination plant, which we have installed in Lakshadweep. And we have now a good system for sunny and cyber wine. We have got a coastal production over here, over for five first of each in the country. That is not time teaching or technology teaching society. We have got started the whole CK culture wave in 2003. That I have an opportunity to see in the group. We started a very small activity of uh, lobster cage culture. Today we have expanded to open sea cage culture for fish. And also the Kapoor project we have for setting up this dam. And that is a very good experience for us. Now the government of India is asking us to do detailed survey as actual plant will be coming up shortly. This I'm not showing much in detail, which Mr. Prasad has already covered, like energy from the oceans our experience on the wave energy plan, and another aspect is on gas index. This is a methane gas in the form of a blocks which is below the seabed. We have a project wherein we are trying to drill. How do you take these uh, gas which are uh, pressurized more than 160 times and pressurized on the deep waters? We have identified few locations, but the laboratory test is being done, which is a cost-intensive activity that can be taken up in the larger level. Offshore wind, yes, we have a small component, major work is done by NEWA. And the algal liquid production, that is another activity which we are taking up on the bio-algae part of. We have few technology transfer on that. And other niche area, we will not, I will not say, but this is to show that we have the potential to go to deep sea. We have remotely operable vehicle, which is operable at 5,000 meters water depth. We have various activity for that. We have our own ships. The Sagarmidi is a well-acute research vessel. And Sagar Manjusha, we have two more coastal research users, Sagar Tara and Sagar Anveshaga. These are all sailing continuously, and they help us in many of the technology demonstration activities. When you talk about these aspects, particularly for working offshore, we need to have a forecast. Ocean state forecast plays a major role, particularly for the industry. So we have developed our own models and algorithms. And using, we are running our own model. We have our own data collection methodology. Our sister institute in Kais is working on. We do support the fishermen on potential fisheries drone and storm surge warning. India is one country along with the cyclone. We provide a storm surge warning. So, uh, I will tell the uh, work activity done by our offshore structure group headed by Dr. Raman Muthi. I've collected few of his slides on his and the, on their experience on offshore wind energy plant in which they are working with TV. Uh, they are identified, is identified, and the potential sites between Ramachuram and near Kanyakumari and Kanyakumari in Tamil and the Gulf of Kumar and Gulf in Gujarat. These two are the potential sites 
and obviously uh, brains is now which has cost come here about 26 gigawatt and another cost will be 25 gigawatt and overall potential along the engine cost will be about 100 estimated so now having done this we need to collect the data so again that's about comparison of onshore and offshore onshore the mass data offshore offshore has got in the lead up we are we are trying to uh, data we get the link of our investment need to be done that will help us approach our industry across the financial institutions for uh, getting the business of the loans numerous the cost of the part you need to know in the business information generally it is possible to have the system whether it is viable to conduct what other cost it will be involved and offshore data collection platform we have uh, now installed more than one year it is functioning and the design part has been done by our own institute we have got our own model and uh, experimentation facility that can be done one in uh, of pipa port and gulf of kutch in jakau region this work has been done the installation is really unique again i said we work with a minimum marine spread and that's why it is cost effective we developed our own methodology in installing this platform at uh, nearly about half or more than uh, 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 less than means more than half of the uh, price what could have been done in case you want to bring a marine spread from abroad we have installed it successfully so here in we have also brought in uh, local expertise we have developed sometime we have got our own inherent skill that we use for installing such a system in uh, of gujarat presently it is installed and lidar has been uh, collecting data and novel installation method what we have adopted is this is very important how do we transport since, since you don't have a larger marine spread you need to use a available marine spread which is slightly smaller than the actual what is required so the a unique transportation methodology positioning and driving it by jack and also the pipe driving system was used the whole system was placed this is what is uh, i always appreciate that uh, with uh, our knowledge uh, local expertise we are able to do that so th this when compared to any other technique this may be much much cheaper because of this uh, methodology what we adopted and uh, you you'll be glad to note that the system is now erected it has withstood all this uh, monsoon and harsh condition even there was a cyclone passing through that nisarga cyclone but in spite of that in gulf of combat this is what get, as an engineer as a technologist you get uh, satisfaction to that so from the laboratory level as a simple engineer going to the field and making it functional that is what is a big challenge for all of us we could succeed that and uh, also the design of substrate substrate is very important and they have adopted a, a specific methodology they have contributed to that more than about uh, uh, three substrate concepts are used monopile gravity and jack jacket so in this process again our uh, junior engineers they learned and uh, uh, the installation from the design stage to the installation stage including the selection of component we have done successfully 
which you also involved the turbine part of it we work closely with anyway now suitability of substructure is very important we have already identified what could be the substructure for the tamil nadu region because there is a different type of soil strength and what could be for gujarat this one is on the other side of park but me other one is in arabian sea this has been designed and uh, now it's easy for us to suggest and go for a higher level of uh, more calculation before the actual installation take place in case you want to do it so you have to understand what's the difference between doing in the land and in the marine these are all the additional work and how do you transfer the power from there to here the grid connection this makes it slightly expensive when you want to do it in offshore and regarding the data part of it we have got uh, temperature profile and density profile everything we have collected and we have it over there now uh otec which mr prasad has covered it no the 2000 2001 we were working on otec subsequently in 2004 5 we concentrate on another project called thermal distillation process that is using the same principle in the lesser water depth is it possible to produce fresh water there was an opportunity in lakshadweep i had also visited way back in 2005 more than 15 years ago they were relying on uh, uh, rain water which is distributed to the houses in kavarathi more than uh, nearly about 10000 people were living there there are about nine islands even the northernmost island bitra where i have gone about 150 people are living there so there are also uh, indians like us but living far away with uh, harsh conditions and the limited so there is a boon for them when this uh, desalination process the plant was installed 2005 until date last 15 years this has been producing water initially we had uh, producing we were producing 1 lakh liter now 1.25 uh, lakh liter is being produced so we collected a lot of data we have improvised we have understood how this uh, uh, is possible the challenge here is each topography of the island it differs basically they are all coral reef island Yet design cannot be simply straight away and say that like you do it in land base, it cannot be copied. It has to be redesigned and revalidated, and that is what is the strength we got it. So the, here the temperature difference we have about 11 degree and surface is 28, 29 degree. This is so unique. Our surface temperature in our tropical waters remain always the same. So going to 500 meter depth, to 500 meter distance, we were able to get this cold water. so the surface sea water is vaporized at 12 20 millibar pressure and the cold sea water is drawn from the ocean that is used for condensing the fresh water so uh, our institute uh, decided to send group of doctors from one of the famous medical institute here they have analyzed and that the, the water borne diseases which are very common among these islanders have dropped out so not only providing water health benefit also could be established we are also working on this nutrient rich water some small amount of work was done during that period this is a suitability we need to understand and design it and it another part is arabian sea you know very well the monsoonal winds and the waves are very strong it has to withstand all these conditions that has been done successfully as i said earlier the installation company was done through the industry the local industry and that personnel had the benefit the another challenge when you work we have only a very small window because during the monsoon period nothing can be transported over there and you can see the islands are small there is la no large crane or a handling facility so there are unique designs we could do this is an aerial view of agathi plant we had in kavarathi agathi and minikoi now six more islands we are working on it so it's being called as an not water this is spin off of otec so i want to say the emphasis here how the ocean energy when you work on it you may come across different aspects this is the initial work we we can also do barge motor we did some work uh, also off chennai also we have done but it's not economical mainly because transporting the fresh water from there this is six plants which uh, one has been completed now and roth another five more work is in progress again there is a window during monsoon we cannot do but we are able to complete the work in time there is there are industry who are uh, two industries have been given this job of completing it this is extreme conditions so i want to you to appreciate and see how difficult it is uh, to make the system functional even such period any damage happens you can't go and uh, do any repair work so the extreme amount of your factor safety what we do it need to be much much more uh, higher and we need to have a good amount of data sets that is what is the strength of this institute 
we have collected the wave data working with the force allowed we have also installed instrument during this period which is uh, the same gauges of collected data this collective knowledge and information what we have learned ourselves this there is no foreigner involved there is nobody else there is no external uh, uh, knowledge has been brought in this is in house our own knowledge which that is the biggest happiness we could have it Yes. Yeah. You have four more minutes. No problem. I'm finishing now. So this is a cold water pipe. Yeah. This is a HDP pipe we started using. This again an expertise we have brought in. Uh, this was the initial when the water time we had a failure. Now the country is also producing such a uh, high density polyethylene pipeline. This has to be assembled. We have our own staff who have the capability to. have this assembly to take place so the long length of 600 700 meter can be assembled and taken on board and the right side bottom this is a way in the coral reef without uh, having the uh, abrasion of the coral this need to be installed at sea finally when we talk about larger energy we also need to think of a smaller energy there are be systems being designed for example i know a system of uh, ocean thermal energy system using the temperature difference of water column for underwater profiling instrument i had an opportunity in one of the oceans conference some other country person i was sharing it i found to use a different material and again biomimicking trying to understand from the nature whether we can do like i said fixed propeller to the uh, moving propeller that is possible so taking design ideas from nature and the first the human made process material selection devices that need to be done that could be nano robotics there could be swarm of robots which could be used again using the energy which is available in the ocean so to control ocean energy is going to play a larger role i have not touched upon about paris declaration where we are trying to look at it alternate source of energy we need to look at this perspective development of new technology to work in offshore hostile environment that is the biggest challenge for us and there are technology gaps and barrier in developing this sector first is enabling the technology then the risk management that's very important then commonality and design uh, consensus and the uh, grid access this is what in, you can develop how do you have the grid access and transport it that again involves a cost and the economic prospect aspect finally es uh, establishing equitable environmental mitigation measures that is what we have to work on so it is not just seeing it when you look at it in actual operational conditions when you want to look at it as an industry perspective when you want to make it economic benefit out of that these aspects need to look at it that's what is really making everyone all over the world if you look at it on what like there are about 1000 patents are there but actual implementation these aspects need to be done in much much more i am sure that the days to come with the many of the new engineers who are involved with the development of technology and design aspect with a large amount of data sets currently available and the computation facility which is improving with artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning that could be new tools but in the field whatever i said will remain it may be harsh it may be due to the climate change you may find uh, again the monsoon water maybe there will be shift in monsoon there could be cyclones how do you overcome that is what is a challenge to not on these days to come with this i conclude again i thank you thanks to the president of iei and the chairman of the engineering board dr gopal krishnan and uh, my friend dr nilanjan director technical and mr sankulshan thank you very much thanks to mr uh, the moderator uh, mr joseph for conducting this session thank you dr vetration i am sure the deliberations presented in today's webinar in ocean energy by the three panelists engineer r venkateshan dr s nilamani dr prasad vinayak who have shared their knowledge and their experiences in ocean energy you are the foundation for a lot of great innovations and safe operations around the world we thank all the great three panelists now we are moving on to the question and answer session the first question how the desalination process can be made economic through use of ocean energy and which 
desalination process is most suitable for use of ocean energy where in india such desalination plant have been installed and what is the capacity of such desalination plant the question goes to dr invitation i will answer but it has it will be substantiated by mr prasad we have this potential presently to prove in lakshadweep it is possible because uh, where we have already having an experience of uh, uh, doing such a work and we particularly for desalination we have as i said earlier the shorter distance close to the shore and deep water is available because of the coral islands and uh, further i think prasad can say more about other aspects of how do you link with water and many more no essentially i think there are many many parts of this question so let me attempt one by one essentially there are uh, two uh, uh, popular i'll say uh, desalination techniques which are being used one is the most popular which has reached all households that is ro uh, and in chennai now we have uh, a few uh, reverse osmosis based sea water desalination plants they have like they have like really in a different scale uh they at the moment uh, look at uh, the uh, i'll say popular uh, you know, with the decision makers and policy makers second part is thermal desalination which uh, uh, is uh, spearheaded by an iot mainly focused on islands uh and because it's its condition today's condition uh, 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 i think it is without much uh, i say uh, development is very well suiting to the island uh, islands especially in lakshadweep uh so so uh, really at the moment we still are not in position to really say that you know we, we the economy uh, is really competent with other uh, desalination techniques but we need to really work further uh, the scaling is one factor and also powering desalination using otec itself like for example what we are doing for uh, 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 the upcoming uh, otec plant in kavarathi there we are employing otec uh, open cycle otec where we are generating electricity uh, uh, in the plant itself and we are using that electricity to run all the pumps so our operational cost is going to be literally cost in the sense the energy consumption operational energy consumption is going to be zero because the plant is going to generate all the electrical power uh, that is that it needs to operate itself plus we ho- we are hopeful to generate a, 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 a say a, a 2 3% extra power but considering the scale of that plant which is 100000 liters per day uh now because there was a, a question about the scale of the plant also capacity of the plant uh, so so uh, the in uh, kavarathi already there is a 100000 liters per day uh, capacity plant and the second plant which i was talking about at the moment was uh, is a self powered desalination plant in the coming uh, few years i think we'll be able to see that plant operational we are working on that so uh, i hope uh, i have covered uh, many many dots together i will i will add mr prasad we also work on uh, desalination plant with uh, solar based so we have oh, installed yes. in uh, again with iit madras we have uh, installed in uh, uh, Kav- kanyakumari southern part of india that is yes. the one success story we would like to repeat find it so that's also a good opportunity absolutely 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 yeah. the solar thermal plant essentially yeah yeah thank you very much the next question goes to dr nilamani how much ocean energy is produced commercially across the world which are the leading countries dr nilamani ocean you mean ocean thermal energy uh yes ocean energy so it could be thermal energy and tidal energy yeah. probably a yeah, break of uh, energy yeah if we talk about see the best uh, proven ocean energy is ocean tidal energy 250 megawatts was installed in france during 
this was among all the ocean energy tidal energy is already uh, at a commercial scale this is the biggest uh, ocean energy uh, power in terms of tidal energy but then if you talk about uh, commercial level power wave energy no they are all pilot plants like uh, we see we did 150 kilowatt in india way back 1990 so around the world if you see norway portugal england japan all of them have even today they have done only uh, um, uh, pilot plant no commercial plant yet even in otec as um, prasad was telling they are all um, pilot plant only there is no megawatt level you see we have to wait for another maybe 10 years or 20 years to see uh, megawatt level 10 to 20 megawatt thank you dr nelamani the next question goes to mr prasad sir these turbines can only be used when we have wave in the ocean or seas for that matter of fact whether it is due to wind moon or earth motion my main question is would it be producing energy by artificial waves if there are calm waters or would it be sitting idle in absence of waves should i repeat the question no i think i, I got the gist of the uh, question essentially uh, the whether this the question is about wave energy turbine uh, when there are no waves there will not be power produced the turbines have to remain idle there will be certain cut off air flow that will uh, essentially uh, below certain wave heights probably uh, 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 at low wave height especially this turbine might remain idle yes that is one part second part is uh, whether artificial waves can be created i, I think uh, a uh, creation of artificial waves uh, even in a uh, amusement park needs huge electricity huge electricity so so i think uh, uh, we are not really uh, thinking of that particular part of creating of uh, artificial waves but essentially when the uh, incidentally as uh, uh, professor nilmani also mentioned uh, that you know uh, wave energy is intermittent uh, sometimes you can have huge cyclonic waves and there can be a period when uh, the waves are going to be very mild so uh, location uh, uh, becomes in- important so so ideally the plant also should be at a place where the this uh, uh, average wave input is uh, sufficiently good i will just add one more point during 1989 see we were doing experimental work in the flume on uh, pneumatic energy and we were using a small turbine to generate power to light up small bulbs okay it was happening it was going during 1989 88 to 89 during that time one politician from center came to our department i don't want to mention the name that the politician he was telling oh it is really good so why don't we spend a lot of uh, money to install wave vectors Uh, in india in many institute and we will generate waves and then produce power see the basic, <laughs> see the basic thing is so you will spend for example 1 megawatt hour power to generate wave energy but then you will extract only something like 20 25% if the system is more efficient so uh, luckily nature is generating energy almost free of cost wind movement freely it is generating energy for benefit of us so that way artificial generation of wave it will not work at all technically mm-hmm. thank you thank you doctor nilamani the next question can the sea water movement conditions be simulated in the laboratory it is almost the same as that the previous uh, question uh, or through a theoretical hydro hydraulic model for such model what type of coordinate system is most suitable dr nilamani both are good yeah 
Okay, the first question, uh, we have Ocean Laboratory, many places, including IIT Madras, IIT Karakpur, in, in, in our institute, Koik Institute for Scientific Research, we have very good laboratory, wave facilities. But then, we cannot mimic nature in the laboratory. Even that may not have, uh, that may not have happened even in another hundreds of years. That will not happen. Because see, in the ocean, any point of time, anywhere on the ocean, you will see waves very highly random. Simultaneously, you will see wind, some wind force with its magnitude and direction, some form of current, and many things else. So such generation in the laboratory, even you have fantastic wave basin, it is not possible. But, but then um, that is not an issue for research. Because in a research, we have to know very clearly what is the input condition. See, for example, um, as Professor Dr. Venkatesham was telling, um, they have a lot of systems for measuring in the field. Uh, but, but still, uh, we could not able to measure all the systems simultaneously very accurately. It is very, very difficult. And even if it is possible, simulation of that in the laboratory at scale model, very, very difficult. So this is what I wanted to say regarding um, laboratory. Uh, what is the next next question you were asking? Uh, <clears throat> the next question goes to Dr. Nelamani again. It is from a Geetam Saha, undergraduate student <clears throat> from Javedpur, uh, Javedpur University. Best. In practical scenario, out of fixed and floating type wave energy turbine, which is more efficient? Absolutely more efficient is fixed type. See, this, this um, um, uh, why I am telling absolutely, all ocean wave energy devices or any other wave energy devices in the ocean the, the best efficiency you will get when it is fixed, whether it is wave or current or wind. Okay, because see the energy you are extracting is proportional to, in general, it is proportional to kinetic energy and potential energy in the wave. So wave, uh, the, the water particle velocity in the wave, that is what indirectly is generating power. And the relative velocity, that's what we say. Imagine you have a floating structure, it is swinging forward and backward along with the wave. Your relative velocity will reduce. The relative incident kinetic energy will reduce. So you will not generate much energy in a floating system unless you move it very strong. Like um, uh, you don't allow, you, you make it to float, but you make sure it is not uh, responding with the wave then uh, it will generate better energy. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nelamani. The next question goes to Dr. Venkateshan. Sir, there is any cost analysis for analysis for using ocean energy compared conventional grid energy and also solar I think this was well pointed out by Dr. Neelamani in his slide itself. He has clearly pointed out the cost cost part of it. So yes, it is available. That's what we are talking about. You can see one by one. In the case of wave, we have our own limitation. We don't have the resources continuously throughout the year. That's a limitation we have compared to the conventional case. Ocean thermal energy is possible. That's what Mr. Prasad and his uh, group is working on it. In the case of tidal, again, it is limited to the location, where in India, few location. Wind, offshore wind is really among all these things which is the industry can stride forward, take it up. That's what they are looking at. It. Offshore wind has got a slightly exponential cost involving into the grid part of it, the last slide I had mentioned. So the cost, if you look at it per se, little bit it's difficult. That's what everybody is looking on it. In the normal wind energy, you need to have about one second of wind data, wind profile we call it, for a more than a year, almost sometimes also two years. That is what will fetch you whether it is potential or not. 
So this aspect, if you look at it, yes, it's available. Some cases, they, like Dr. Nilamani said, they try to put it, uh, yeah, a sort of some factor and try to increase it. But physically, some investor wants to come. It's a big challenging task. Another question somebody asked about modeling, I would like to add here. There is one uh, technique called numerical tank. It is very, very expensive system, which is trying to evolve in Sao Paulo University. You have it even in India, our institute we propose. It's multiple crore where we can simulate the condition, but still, myself and um, Dr. Nilamani, one aspect of offshore structure we are working, we, we are planning to work, that is growth of marine growth on plants, means uh, after, after structure. We have also structure working for the last 20, 30 years. Now, this is a big issue in uh, when you want to try the life assessment in uh, Gulf region in US. They have multiple billion dollars of offshore structure. How long it is there? When we found this growth, this growth is so huge. When you design, um, Dr. Nilam and others, normally they are expert in designing offshore structure. They take 50 years load and try to put it. But this factor is never considered. This is never taken into account. It may increase the load two times more, three times more, or four times more. So I have, we have a data for collected from our mode boy system. I shared with him that varies from location to location, period to period. Arabians is different, Bay of Bengal is different. He is trying to simulate in the laboratory condition. But for all these things, our factor of safety only will take care when you actually deploy it. Because theoretical and practical, rightly, right, he rightly pointed out, it's the same case. You have a forecast also the same case. You'll be surprised to know I work a lot with this forecasting team. They remove the wave in modeling because wave is complex for them. So you design your own boundary condition and run through it. So more and more complex, more and more variable, it's difficult to run. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vajitesh. The next question was to Dr. Yes Nilamani. The question like this. No doubt that there is need for increase in renewable capacity, but this carry a challenge of integration and need large amount of storage. Can we provide ocean energy, RTC, meaning round the clock, by coupling with some other source? Dr. Sir, Nela. you please tell the name. We really appreciate these uh, questions. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you, you very much. Tell the name who asked the question and collect. Yeah, yeah, who asked the question? Just no, it is uh, not visible. Me? Not visible. Yes. We all, we all appreciate, I think other panelists also will agree. We all appreciate whoever is asking very valid questions. Very, very interesting, in fact. Interesting, very interesting question. So, Okay, I will give my point. I, I'm sure um, my colleagues also will add more points. They are more uh, experienced in this. See, for example, tidal energy, you can predict even 10 years from now, for example, January 11, 2030, this time, what is the tidal energy available? You can predict. So, absolutely, um, uh, you can um, plan and execute and use the power. Size. Whereas it is not possible for ocean wind, ocean uh, wave. Even ocean current you can predict because ocean current is dominated by tide, particularly close to coastal water. And similarly, OTEC. See, OTEC, for example, near from equator to 20 degree north and 20 degree south, uh, south um, surface temperature is not varying much and uh, 1000 meter down temperature does not vary much. So, so these three, from this point of view, you can produce energy according to your demand. If you don't have demand, then you can leave it. It is not so for wave energy and offshore wind energy. And then uh, to just to add you, see, always the demand is one important thing we have to keep in mind. For example, Andaman Nicobar Island, Luxury Island, um, as we all know, there is no other big source. We have to carry all the way crude oil or whatever from mainland. So um, we should give priority to a place where there is no other source of energy. That is where we have to give priority for ocean energy. Okay. So thank you. Then uh, my colleagues may add some more uh, important points. On this. Yeah, I I want to add here is that sometimes what happens the societal need comes first. When you talk about the cost component of it, sometimes the government gives subsidy. So when you look at it. 
you, for example, in the case of Lakshadweep, they need water. That has to be provided. So, how is economical? We can reduce expenses only. We can see, but that the need come need aspect comes as a priority. Like he rightly pointed out. For example, we are trying to work in one of the Chavara Islands in Andaman. There is no source of water for them. So we have to look at the technology. How best it can be done. But we learn in that process how we can economize, and when you come back to trying to duplicate in other region, that is what is the challenge for us. Thank can you. I just add that, uh, uh, one uh, uh, yeah. Can I just add one one uh, yes, thought yes, actually? Yes. Uh, generally, the storage is required wherever there is variability of resources high. So uh, uh, and storage is not much required or not required when the resource is stable. So as uh, uh, Dr. Nilamani Amani said that uh, OTEC actually the ocean itself acts as thermal storage in this case. So uh, you can operate the plant based on the demand demand side. Essentially, that's why uh, we say that you know the OTEC plant can be used for base load. For variable component, you can have something else. So now the other part is wave and uh, tidal, tidal plant. The variability is much higher. Uh, sir, to the extent, uh, uh, to, the, to a lesser extent in case of tidal stream turbines or uh, uh, tidal power, but more to the wave. Uh, and essentially, that's the reason actually we still need to work with this, for example, uh, with uh, uh, hybrid technology where the variable output of, uh, say, for example, a solar power plant. As I say, solar photovoltaic and variable power out, uh, output of a uh, wave energy uh, uh, plant. When these things are combined together, there is a possibility to reduce the variability variation in the output also. So, so I think storage plus hybridization is probably uh, uh, one direction in which we we need to work, and we are working towards that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we are limiting the question and answer section. Another two more questions, probably. Yes. Uh, the next question goes to um, Engineer Prasad. The question, what are best options for India to focus on? Which form of energy to do research and development in next one decade? Also, uh, Ms. Engineer Srijit BK from Kuwait is asking that it is possible to share the slides. So, yes, we will uh, um, share the requested slide uh, with the permission of uh, IA headquarters. Uh, yeah, so, so shall I answer the question? Yes, uh, please. Uh, Really, in my opinion, uh, we can always compare technologies, especially renewable energy technologies, uh, in terms of economics. But are we really in position to come to give, uh, give a justice to each technology? The reason is, instead of putting a technology against another technology, it's in best in our best interest to develop all the technologies and use appropriate technologies based on the location and uh, the time. So, so I think the key lies in developing technologies and employing appropriate technologies instead of actually comparing, say, say uh, whether wave energy is costlier uh, and uh, the uh, 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 tidal energy is less costlier. Uh, honestly, uh, going by the the requirement in islands where people are so deprived of uh, uh, energy, we uh, uh, we must do something. And uh, honestly, uh, when we as technology developers or say enablers, uh, we need to really keep kind of you know, focus on all the technologies equally, in fact, and give opportunity to all the developers uh, as much as possible to develop their technology. Obviously, then and employ the technology uh, uh, as the most appropriate technology or a group of technologies to be uh, uh, given. So, so that's what I feel. Thank you. Yes, I, I, I want to just add one more point. Yes, Thanks yes, for yes. Um, Prasad. Um, you see, um, the, the most important thing is economics, finally. Because, see, ocean energy technology, even uh, after uh, very good development, 
uh, who will uh, invest money for one megawatt system wave energy or one megawatt uh, uh, what the government only will come forward at the beginning they see they, they, they are ready to take risk um, no, no private company will come at this level see private company they always look for profit so they will come only when when you develop technology and go for commercialization with uh, 100 megawatt and that but initially government will come so the, the message is a very small uh, see why we spend 4 crore rupees for uh, wave energy 150 kilowatt because mobilization and civil engineering cost which was 80 percent this is the biggest uh, issue in um, all the renewable energy technology civil engineering cost uh, see we should uh, go for a new type of material like i am telling See, high density, high strength polyethylene material. The wave energy caisson we, we made in uh, Willingham, it was 3,000 ton weight in air. Imagine we have a technology where we can mold this piece as a single piece using high strength polyethylene. We, if you have an industry, you can make thousands of these things for um, uh, thousands you can make for See, we know what we have to do. We have to develop green fabrication techniques, high strength materials, are cheaper. And it would be really costly to do it in other than here. Thank you, Nidamani. Next question is the last question. What is the average size of the project cost wise? Is there a scope of commercial activity? for a small business person. Corona has affected the business. All of our people and many are jobless. That's true. That's part. Uh, this question goes to Dr. Venkateshan. I think, uh, yes, I, I will add. I, actually, I was thinking some other answer for that. Uh, could that this question also adapt to that? Uh, I was in Alaska in some conference, as I told you. People are trying to look at the basic principle. We talk, we, whatever we discussed last two hours, we talk about a one megawatt plan, we talked about larger application. But there are also smaller needs. For example, I, when the, the presentation, what I had seen was a material. We have a delta T of 25 degrees centigrade. We want it to be expanded and we call it just because this is what simple principle you need to produce energy. Can we do that with the, this, the person demonstrated in a polymeric material? So can you think of a shape memory alloys? Anybody working on shape memory alloys, they know about that. That is a one small area. The application could be many. You can try to look at the smaller application for a fisherman because he goes into the sea. He has an opportunity to have a difference in temperature. Can you find a material which will work even a small 10 degrees centigrade? So one aspect, larger plan, yes, bigger industry will think, they think of in different ways. But this material development, which can be done by any one of you in the laboratory condition, as you prove in this condition it is available, you know very well this bandwidth, this, this data is available in the ocean. This is what is the principle I am trying to adopt. That is the one simplest way we can think. Because applications are plenty, but the moment you find out a solution to that material selection or a device which can work. Somebody showed me from Monadil College, he devised a small wave energy plant. Very small, he had demonstrated his own money in uh, Vizac port. You can demonstrate that there could be a smaller technique to do that. He don't think immediately economic benefit, you don't think some, simply equivalent to the land based cost. That is not what we are talking. Like we talked about wave, wave driven boy, you think of a smaller system which can be adapted and used. You see now in the domestic application also, you have today we bought something called which you can make hand based battery operated juice maker. This is very easy. You go anywhere you want to do it, it's very hygienic. The application could be planned if you think of such a smaller device. I'm sure that you come out with that. It's difficult to go for a tidal, it's not possible. It's a solar base like Mr. Prasad said, hybrid. You think of something solar and uh, temperature difference in the water column, solar and a small wave driven. That is the best way to think about it uh, in uh, find an economic way. As long as the technology works, is fine, put the cost separately. Thank you. I think thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Venkateshan. Now, we have a good number of attendees around the globe, including IA student chapter members, guests, and 
they have attended the, this webinar. I sincerely believe that the practicing professionals in the relevant field will be immensely benefited from this compilation of knowledge. Thank you very much. Thank you all the three panelists. Now the last item is vote of thanks by Dr. Nelanchan Sankupta, Director Technical Institute of Engineers, India. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Panikkar. Uh, I, from Institute of Engineers, I would like to express our sincere thanks to all our panelists, Dr. Prashad Dudgaokar, Dr. Nilamani, and my good friend, Dr. Venkateshan, and uh, for uh, sparing your valuable time to educate us. This is really an educative session that I have heard. In fact, I did not have any idea about it, but I got a lot of uh, knowledge now, and I am quite knowledgeable now about this ocean energy after this technical session, technical webinar, and I must uh, my express my vote of th my, express my thanks to Mr. Joseph Panikkar, who is an NP of India, and actually who actually uh, advised us uh, to hold such an webinar on this type topic, and suggested Dr. Nilamani's name, Dr. Venkatesh's name, and Professor uh, Dudgaokar also joined us. So we are very much grateful from IEI side, and I thank all my colleagues who have taken the pain uh, for. Uh, for for organizing this webinar and our National Skill Development Forum of Shimla who are providing all the technical support including the YouTube uh, YouTube channel broadcasting they are doing also uh, and all the attendees who have attended this seminar if you have any question you may send it to us we shall forward this to our panelists so that there is a good technical discussion on this a very new topic comparative to other other things it's a very new topic to us and we shall work together uh, for uh, more advancement in this topic in near future. Thank you all. And with the kind permission of all our panelists, uh, we may close the webinar now, if you kindly permit, sir. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you